Happy Monday morning, everybody. It is a great day to start off the week right in God's word and prayer with each other. Um, getting ready for this tough, wonderful, blessed week that we have in front of us. Um, and here we are. Uh, today, it's, it's a hot weekend here in Rochester, Minnesota. Um, we're in later August and um, we have like 90 degree weather. And uh, boy, um, everybody's going, what the heck? We're supposed to start getting pumpkin spice stuff out. We're supposed to start cooling down. And, and what's this 90 degree weather? Is this, is this planned for? Is this supposed to be happening? Only God knows. And uh, um, one thing we know for sure is 90 degree weather for Minnesotans is not comfortable. And um, it was interesting. We had some, I had some visitors from Phoenix um, in Minnesota here uh, earlier in the summer and it was in the 80s or something like that. And, and you'd think the Phoenix people are like, oh goodness, it feels so much better. But they were just like miserable because the dew point in Minnesota is quite a bit higher. It's more humid here than in Phoenix. And so they were not comforted by the heat or the humidity. Uh, they were uncomfortable. Um, there's so many things in life that make us uncomfortable. And here, standing in the sun, in this hot weather, maybe we'll do something to, that usually helps with comfort. We'll just walk into the shade. It can make a huge difference in a hot day just to get out of the sun. It can, it can be important for your body, um, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually even to just get out of the hot sun and receive some comfort from the shade. Uh, when we take comfort in the shade, does that mean the sun goes away? Of course not. It does not go away, it's still up there. Just like on a cloudy day, we're asking, well, where's the sun? Well, it's, it's up there, of course it's up there, right? And it's just blocked by the clouds. Well, here the trees block it. We have a nice relationship with the trees. The trees absolutely need the sun on their leaves uh, to, to do photosynthesis and stuff. And, and we get the benefit of being in their shade and cool. And what a wonderful thing the shade can be for our comfort. Um, Today we're going to be in 2 Corinthians, if you probably maybe got the clues with all the words about comfort. And 2 Corinthians chapter 1, starting at verse 3, um, was a set of verses that really came out strong at the beginning of COVID for me. I think it was a de devotion that Pastor Coglin put out and used these verses. Maybe it was a, a written document. I don't remember for sure, but I know one of the first family devotions we did in the Harvey household um, at, during COVID's beginning days when everything's like locked down and we're kind of stuck with each other, we get blessed to be together, um, was these verses. And, and for me, they were really um, timely. Uh, for my kids, one word came out a lot and it was kind of like, oh my goodness, are we going to hear this word one more time? And guess what? That word is comfort. So if you want to join me in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, starting at verse 3, we're going we're gonna to dig into this a little bit today. And, uh, and it's going to bump into a devotion that we did not too long ago about, uh, you know, the tough stuff in this world. And we, we keep coming back to this. Um, uh, kind of like the, the Rochester Sermon theme for 2023. Say it again. There's a lot of stuff that we just need to keep saying again and again. And uh, we need to hear it at different times in different ways so that by some way... Uh, that um, we'll start soaking it in and maybe when that the tough stuff comes we start um, following some of these teachings of, of Jesus so here we are uh, chapter 1 verse 3 let's start it off and uh, we'll read along praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort there's the word comfort the God of all comfort is the same Father of Jesus Christ, and he gives that comfort. Now, comfort can be a good thing as it, uh, it eases our, our restless souls and it, it comforts our minds. Um, to be stuck with comfort and to need it all the time and, and just uh, be so reliant on comfortability that we can't do hard things is, is not what this is about. This isn't about... Just, just live life so you're comfortable. Now, a lot of Americans don't realize just how comfortable we are used to and comfortable we are. Um, we sometimes talk about first world problems where our toughest problem is they didn't have 
the right non-lactose milk at the coffee shop today and I'm really bummed about that you know or or maybe this video game that we're playing um, or uh, on our phone um, man we didn't get quite the right prize today you know or maybe it's raining <laughs> first world problems and so we we don't realize exactly how comfortable we are but Paul has a different message in this comfort passage and we're gonna dig into that together but here is the God of all comfort, who comforts us in our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. He comforts us so that we can comfort others. And that's going to be a continued theme in all of this. And all of the scripture is, is it's a never a one-way thing where God just delivers it to us and then we hold on to it. It's always about overflowing the cup, as Psalm 23 says. God gives us not just enough, what he gives us is enough, but he doesn't just stop there. He gives us more that it can pour out over and through us into the lives of other people. So the comfort that God gives us, it goes out to other people. But it just tells us that when we are comforted by God, it's not about holding on to it with our white knuckles, but it's how do we pass that comfort on to others over into the lives so also through Christ our comfort overflows if we are distressed it is for your comfort and salvation if we are comforted it is for your comfort which produces in you patient endurance of the same suffering we suffer so there we are Paul is talking about the people that he is with when that's the word if we um, are in distress, it is for your comfort and salvation. And if we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. It's like intertwined there. And if we focus on comfort, we miss the fact that intertwined with comfort is sufferings. Intertwined with comfort is distress. It is this natural balance in life that we have in this world, the sinful world maybe, but it is a, a part of this world where we know what comfort is because we know what distress is. We know what comfort is because we know what suffering is. And so when we think the Bible tells us that we won't have to go through it or, or our God should be a loving God, so why would he produce suffering or, or distress in this world? And we can confidently say that our God is the God of all comfort. Paul doesn't say, our God is the God of all distress and suffering. The God, the Father of Jesus Christ, is the God of all comfort. But this world, the sinful world, is a world of suffering and distress. And so the God of all comfort enters into that world, stays by our side, and gives us that comfort. And then we can give it to other people. But suffering and distress will happen. That's where our God never disappoints. And, and uh, fellow Christians, comforting, uh, uh, comfort or, or sufferings or distress, it all produces more comfort because of the peace that we can work through that distress or suffering with. Paul and his companions were under suffering and distress, and, and we have stories of them singing hymns in jail after being nearly stoned to death or beaten to death. We have shipwrecks where they... They, they guard and everybody survives and they make good of that. That's comfort in the midst of distress. <laughs> and a timely breeze, right? First world problems. I think I talk about it every single devo devotion here. Um, sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, you also uh, so also you share in our comfort. Um, isn't there something like misery loves company as a saying, and I'm not sure it's a Christian saying, um, but it can be made a Christian saying. Misery loves company. Not that we want to make everybody miserable so everybody's miserable together and this awful life can be um, shared, but that in the midst of these sufferings and distresses, Paul and his companions were so grateful but for the people at Corinth that brought them comfort and relief. And they get to share in their suffering, so they got to share in the comfort and joy that their sufferings brought about. 
what a thing, a wonderful thing to share company through sufferings that produces comfort that we can also then share as well. And so then it goes on, and that's the comfort section. It talks about comfort, comfort, comfort all the time, but we don't want to forget the fact that there's also suffering and distress in there and endurance needed. And we know that the God that we worship is the God of all comfort. And even in the midst of this world of sufferings and distress, he brings that comfort, and we can trust it. So the second part of, part of this chapter we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about the hardships we suffered in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired even of life. And here it is again, that, that comfort that is wrapped up in distress and sufferings and hardships that or beyond their ability to endure. So if you hear this saying of like, God will never give you something that you can't handle, Paul says that's not true. In the province of Asia, we were under great pressure far beyond our ability to endure. They could not do it. It was impossible for them to make it through this hardship. They had to lean heavy on God. And God didn't cause that hardship that was so terrible to make them lean on him. That hardship that was so terrible is a part of the sinful world that we're all a part of. Thank you, Adam and Eve. Thank you, sin. But God was there. And God was able to help them endure, even though they did not have the strength to endure. Have you been there? Have you been in those hardships that's way too hard to endure? bring in sometimes people that uh, are on my heart and in my prayers and and this week we have a family at church that lost a, a father and a husband um, before that this this man of God this wonderful man um, had suffered different medical um, uh, emergencies and he was in a hard shape and and so then there was this hardship this great hardship of his life in this world was a hard one and was not getting better um, but we don't want to lose them. There's hard, hard things beyond anybody's ability to endure. The, the family had to go through that. They couldn't do it alone, and it wasn't God's will. But in this sinful world, bad stuff happens, and the God of comfort was there. God of comfort was there as himself, but also the God of comfort was there in the, in the, in the presence of many visitors, many prayers, many kindnesses and much love. The comfort that God gave all those people that visited overflowed into that family that needed it and still do. So this world has hardships beyond what we can bear, not up to what we can bear, but beyond it. But God is the God of comfort and he's with us in all of it. Indeed, in our hearts, we felt the sentence of death but this happened, that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God, who raised this, the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us. On him we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us, as you help us by your prayers. Then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. And that section there, um, you can just hear it, that the prayer was a huge part of getting through it. And God is the God that conquered death. So even when we are under stress that takes us right to the brink of, of life itself, we know that God has been past the brink of life into death, into the bounds of hell, has conquered that, has come back. And so even in the worst hardship, can you imagine a hardship worse than what Jesus went through? He is in ours with comfort that we can overflow to others. This is a tough world, but not tougher than God. This week, as you um, head into your week and, and, and look at that, maybe some of you are in a really tough spot. Maybe some of you are, are really in that hardship place that is beyond what you can bear and you kind of are at the brink of, of, oh Lord, is it even worth it? 
I pray that it's not you're not asking the question is even worth living. And if you are asking that question, talk to someone. May God bring someone to your doorstep to talk you through that so you're not alone. That's part of what the scripture says is we are not alone. And, and being in community helps us so much. But maybe your question is, is it even worth it? This job, this family, this marriage, this whatever it is. God, the God of comfort is here. God, the God of comfort is there with you. He loves you dearly. And may his comfort find you this week. And you can feel it in your life. And you can be excited to overflow it into the lives of others. I hope this week is wonderful for you. It can be a week of comfort that builds you up for the week of hardship that will be in our future. Because there's always one in the future, isn't there? But for those of you that are in that week of hardship, may the comfort from God that has been built up, that you have witnessed in the past, come to mind. May, may fellow Christians that have felt God's comfort and uh, are ready to share it overflow that into your lives. May their prayers be asked for by you because it is okay to ask others to pray for you. And may those prayers lift you up. It is such a huge thing to be prayed for. They make such a big difference in our lives what a comfort prayer is and all these things you have your lord and savior with you at all times who's been through it all and will never leave you nor forsake you this is a world of sin and it's a tough one it really is not much comfort in this world but god god finds a way may you see his way of comfort this week and always Let's pray. Uh, Lord Jesus Christ, we are so thankful for you. You are our comfort and we need it. Uh, Lord Jesus, in all things, in all days, in all ways, Lord, bring your comfort into our lives and let us feel it. Lord, we know that this, this world is sinful and bad things happen and sometimes we're even tempted to blame it on you. But Lord, we know that you are big enough that we can come to you and yell and scream and cry and feel hurt and and even falsely blame you for the sin and evil of this world, even though you are actually the comfort that solves the problem of sin and evil in this world. Lord, help us this week to really see you as our comforter, as our caring God, who has defeated sin, death, and the grave, and that you make all things new, even this sinful, deadly, evil world. Lord, in this distress and this suffering and the hardships, be our comfort. Be with us, Jesus. Amen. Well, it's time to have a wonderful week. A wonderful week that may be full of hardships and distress. But we know that the other side of hardships and distress is God's comfort and presence and love. And may you feel that in awesome ways this week as it overflows from you into others. It's amazing how when we're going through a hardship, that when we can share God's God's love and comfort with others, that hardship seems so much less for us, even if we're right in the middle of it. God is that big and that strong. And you are his beloved child. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you next Monday.